Hi everyone, we're now on lesson two, which is our reading and focus writing of newspaper report writing, and it is week two, Tuesday, the 28th of April 2020, and sorry, in the last lesson I wrote on my board, it was Monday the 27th, but it's actually Tuesday the 28th. So that's where I need to be in class with you guys who can remind me of such things. All right, um, if we go into Ed Studio and we have a look at our reading, I'm just going to remind you um, it's a really good idea to keep a journal and in that journal you should be doing at least 20 minutes of reading each day. You can take your reading from the EPIC reading activities and I'm up, I've updated those. If you're not sure how to log on here's your instructions here and they're really easy if we have a look at what the activity is for today for the 28th it says launch into space with an astronomy book and there's lots of books that you can pick on epic about astronomy and just read about it and record it in your journal okay our actual reading lesson today of course is based on the um, peer politics that we read yesterday um, you can go through that uh, um, if you need me to send you a copy of that magazine. Um, some people didn't get it. I can do that. But you just go through and read it. And it was about a boy dancing, wasn't it? He wanted to dance and the two girls were laughing at him. Maybe we should have a little look at it again just to make sure. Okay, so, whoop, wrong one. Um, here we go. So I'll send you this magazine through again and it has all our lessons on it for the rest of distance learning and that way you can just download it or print it out and it's all there. Peer pressure. I'll put um, each thing on Dojo, might be easier for everyone to get. And here it is here, and I'll just blow that up so we can read through it again. Um, please make sure that you do read through, even if we don't read through it tomorrow, that you do read through each of this each day because each time we read it, we have a different focus point. Okay, so why are you dancing by yourself? You're a boy. You are supposed to play sports like rugby or basketball. Don't you know that dancing is only for girls? And the boy says, but I love dancing. And lots of boys dance. The best rugby players in the world do ballet to strengthen their muscles. It is a very physical activity doing those stretches. Actors like Hugh Jackman and Zac Efron include dance scenes in their movies. People use dance to express their feelings towards each other. I dance because I love the way it makes me feel. I would feel sad if dancing was only for girls. Dance is something everyone should be able to enjoy, just as girls can choose to play rugby and basketball if they'd like. But I don't want to play rugby or basketball. That's okay, says the boy. That's your choice. But don't you agree that you should be able to make your own decisions? It's not for someone else to tell you what to do. Hmm, that's actually a very good point. Wow, you're actually a really good dancer. So check out this new dance move I just learned. He probably says that first and then that one. Could you teach me how to do that? And there they all are dancing. Okay, so what we're looking at today with that, with our questions, is Tuesday. And as you can see, the Tuesday... It's following the same um, sort of procedure that we used last week with our reading comprehension questions. And here we have the uh, headings, if you could please use these as you write and head it up reading for the day, with the right day, unlike me in my last lesson. So your name at the top and then week two, Tuesday the 28th of April 2020 and reading. And then write remembering under that. There it is there, so make sure you spell it correctly. And it has remembering, understanding, applying, analysing, evaluating and creating. And you may say, why are we following this pattern all the time, all the time of these words? What's it all about? And it actually comes from um, the thinking of a very famous psychologist called Dr Edward de Bono, who's actually a brilliant thinker. And he said that when we read things, we read them in using seven different abilities and some people are better at those abilities than other people. So the red hat is intuition, hunches and feelings. 
The white hat is information available and some people really look for those facts and data when they read. A yellow hat is benefits, value and positive aspects. So you're always looking to get information that's always positive to add on to your knowledge. A black hat is caution, difficulty, risk and weaknesses and a green hat is alternative and creative ideas so some people when they read something feel like they want to draw or make a diagram or a table and a blue hat is managing the thinking focus and summary so those people like to get the points and then summarize it and paraphrase it so that's what this red hat is um, seven hats of Edward de Bono is about and that's why you continually see it so when you're remembering identify the main characters in this comment did they use names? If they didn't, then just describe and use a sentence. So underneath remembering, you would start off, the main characters in Peer to Politics are and the boy who liked to dance and the two girls who were trying to influence him not to dance. Something like that. But give me a nice sentence. And of course, pause me in between while you're catching up. Understanding, describe what happens in the comic in three sentences. So the first sentence is going to be the boy wants to dance and express himself. Uh, the girls saw him dancing and tried to influence him to stop dancing because they thought that only girls danced and tried to embarrass him. And the third sentence will be along the lines of the boy ended up convincing the girls that it's more important for individuals to choose what it is they enjoy to do and do it. So three good sentences, something like that. The reason why I give you these answers is because it's no point writing down short little sentences that don't have structure and content in them. You really need to think about it and me telling you very quickly what you need to cover in each sentence. You've still got to stop and think about it and put your words into order. But you can see how in depth I want you to think about it when you're answering. Well, that applying, think of a time that you or someone you know has faced a similar situa situation and explain what happened. So when have you been in a situation where maybe you've wanted to do something and your friends have gone, no, don't do that, that's silly or a waste of time or something like that, but you've really wanted to do it. Or maybe you've been somebody who's tried to convince somebody to stop because you thought it was a bit embarrassing, but it was what they wanted to do. So give me a nice sentence about that. Analyzing, predict how the girls in the comic might change their behavior after, after having spoken with the boy. So they did change their behaviors and they ended up asking the boy to teach them how to dance. So you need to predict how the girls in the comic might change their behavior. So after this conversation, do you think they'll um, make, try and embarrass the boy again? Do you think maybe they'll try and convince their other friends to stop doing things they enjoy because they think it's silly? Have they really learnt a lesson from this conversation? Evaluating is list some alternative actions that the boy in the comic could have taken when confronted by the girls. So if he wasn't such a nice young man, he might have got really angry and might have really told them off. He might have broken down and cried and run away and told on them if he didn't have the confidence um, and the resilience to stand up to them. He Not only did he stand up to them, but he was extremely polite and charismatic. I mean, hey, have you ever tried this? So there, just think about all the different ways that he could have reacted and that'll um, help you understand how well he did react. He actually reacted like an adult um, and really changed their mind. And then the next one's creating and you need to uh, choreograph a short dance routine that could be inserted into the comic strip. So all that means is just make a, see how they're dancing there? You can draw another little extra box down the bottom and draw this girl with the straight hair and the bangs at the front and the ponytail and she could be doing one move, maybe she could be going like that and then this little girl over here could be doing a twirl and the boy could be jumping and doing some kind of leap. So just choreograph and draw another box in to show what they're doing. That's the writing lesson. That didn't take long, did it? Okay, now we're going to do our focus writing lesson and we're going to finish that today um, because I might show you some other things in the week to do with newspaper reporting. So we got up to this page here and it's based on this one. So if you have a look headline, 
which is the catchy headline, a play on words to get your attention. That's the really important one. That's what's at the top of the triangle, which is inverted. Then next, the summary or lead paragraph that has the who, what, where's and when's and captures the reader's um, interest so that they can read it. And then if they're really interested, they can go on into the body of the newspaper article and they can get some more details. And then to finish off, you know... Um, it's often a small little finish off that says next time you think about this you know just tries to uh, duck out of the story with a bit of a point so what you need to do is in these boxes if you haven't got them just write it going down the page um, this is obviously which part of it the headline so just write the headline in next to it then this bit here, while people find the idea of sharks terrifying, experts say, so this is your summary or lead paragraph. Then this one here with all the details, that's the body. And then it finishes off with a little bit of tail, just the tiny little bit of the bottom of the paragraph is your tail end. The bit of pointy bit of the triangle, I mean, is your tail end. Right, you can pause me while you fix that up and then we'll move on to page eight. Um, while we're doing this, I'd just like to say this is Tuesday's lesson and we've we will have completed week two and you're showing me with the work that you're sending back that you're keeping pace and doing this really well. Um, and uh, I think a, a lot of other classes are having trouble getting up to this point. So we're getting through the content together really well and uh, let me know how your understanding is. If you feel that you've got a good understanding about newspaper reports, that's excellent. We'll keep going and I'll put some other content up there for you to download and look at. Right, um, so she says, we have almost finished looking at online news reports. Let's look at the language choices used in these reports. News reports use a variety of language features, including adverbs and adverb groups. Don't forget adverbs add meaning to the verbs and end in ly. And adverb groups tell you where something is. Is it on something? Um, it describes what it is doing and to help expand and sharpen our ideas. So analyze the effect of language choice in an online news report. And an adverb is a word that modifies a verb, an adjective or another adverb. Many adverbs have an ly ending, for example, example gracefully. The shark glides grace, gracefully, glides is the verb. Um, it is the shark's action. So you're going to find the adverbs in this sentence and just write them down. So don't forget they usually end in ly and write it there as well. Um, if you haven't got this page, just head it up newspaper reports like you have for the other activity and just write it 6A and B. Then modality. Now we've gone over modality a lot this year and modality is how definite or not something is when you're describing it. Okay, so uh, in another language feature, it's used in newspaper reports, it's also used in advertising, don't forget, and it shows how certain an author is about an issue. Modality can be expressed in varying degrees of as uncertain, low mod modality to very certain, meaning high modality. It is a writer, if a writer is uncertain about a subject, they use modal verbs such as might or could, which could indicate low, mod low, mod low modality. And for writers certain about a subject, they use strong modalities such as must, will, or definite. I just threw that one in there. So here's our low words, medium words, and our high modality words. So what you need to do is rewrite the sentence, sharks must be protected. And if we look, we can see which one is that under. That'd be a pretty high modality, isn't it? So you need to write that as a low modality. So sharks must be protected is high. So as a low modality, sharks, and choose a word from here that makes sense. Obviously, you wouldn't choose doubtful because your sentence wouldn't make sense. So choose one. If you can think of one yourself, write it in. And medium modality, sharks must be protected. Which word could you use from there? Then to finish off, and this is it, you have got through the lessons for the two weeks, so well done if you've done that. Um, what they want you to do now, um, just you can write 
recording in your news journal if you want, can you just write two or three sentences about what you have now learned about newspaper reporting? What couple of things have really stood out for you that you will remember so that if you need to write newspaper reporting, you can do it? Okay, and that is it. Okay, next lesson's maths. I'll see you then.